Hello everyone, over the months many people have looked at my aircraft skins and said, Lao B, they're a fucking abomination, how do you do it? Well, today is your lucky day. First of all, you're going to have to download a few programs. With the knowledge that you're all a bunch of stingy fuckers, the ones I've picked are all free. GIMP is not just that teenage runaway you keep drugged and tied up in your basement. It's also a very useful program with much the same functionality as Adobe Photoshop. The next program you need is DXT BMP, which is also free. The third program you need is Notepad++. The last things you'll need are 7-Zip and the texture templates from the DCS website. With all of the former installed, you first need to unzip your template. Giggity. Right-click on the folder, select 7-Zip and extract it to a new folder of the same name. The extracted folder will look like this. At this point, you should pull in any images you want to use as decals. You should only use high-quality images which have an alpha background. Double-click on the first file to open it in GIMP. When GIMP opens, you may get a message saying the file is too large. You can usually ignore this. Make sure all the layers are listed on the right-hand side. And the most important thing to remember is, the higher up a thing is on the chain of layers, the more prominent it will be. So things at the top generally cover things further down the list. First of all, we want to eliminate the decals that came with the file. Depending on how the layers are labelled, there can be a little bit of trial and error in this. To remove something, simply click on the eye beside the layer. If it's something you didn't intend to remove, click on the eye again to make it reappear. To bring in your own decals, click File, Open and select your decal. When the file opens, right-click on the image, select Edit and Copy. You must place the decal above the background colour and any paint schemes, but below dirt, scratches and everything else. When you've found a suitable location, right-click and select New Layer. Don't change the size of the layer, just click OK. That layer will now be highlighted in blue on the right-hand side of the screen. Hover the mouse over the image and press Ctrl V to paste the image in. Because currently Doriamo is in danger of dwarfing the fucking plane, we need to scale him down a little. Click the Scale tool, then click on Doriamo. If you don't want him to go all funhouse mirror like a radical feminist, you need to click on that little link. Then scale him to the size you need. With the scaling done, click on the Move icon and place him in your desired location. If you wish to have your decal on both sides of the nose, right-click, select Edit and Copy. Press Ctrl V to paste, select the Move tool and move the copy down to the new location. Because the template is laid out like a piece of flat pack furniture from Ikea, if you leave him the way he is, he'd be upside down and back to front. Select the Rotate tool, click on him and rotate him 180 degrees. When done, click Rotate and then select the Horizontal Flip tool and then simply click on the image to make it flip. With everything in place, go to Pasted Selection at the very top, right-click and select Anchor to Layer. To add your name below the canopy, right-click and select New Layer. Follow the same procedure as before and then click on the Letter tool. Place the cursor, left-click and then type in your name. When done, highlight your name, pick the font, colour and size you desire. Go back to your layer, right-click and select Merge Down. We now select the background layer, select the Fill tool and select a colour. With the colour selected, we go back to our layers, make sure the background layer is still selected and click on our image. We then move to the other two or three paint layers above that and click on them with the fill tool. They may be in two or three parts, so you just click on them and fill. With everything done, we then go to File and Save. GIMP will automatically save the file as an XCF rather than the Adobe format. After we've saved the file, we go to File and Export. Select the type and then select BMP from the list. Click Export and then click Advanced Options. Select 24-bit and then click Export. There are a couple of pitfalls to be aware of. Some files will have shadow textures on top of the other textures. Go towards the top of the layer tree, find the shadow layers and turn them off. It's also important to remember the position of decals and their orientation when replacing them with your own. When all the files are exported, open up the original folder on one half of your desktop and DXT BMP on the other. Drag the first bitmap across to the DXT BMP window and wait for it to load. When it's fully loaded, go to File, Save As and select DDS Texture. Select DDS DXT 5 from the drop-down menu and click Save. Do this for all of the bitmap images until you have a complete set of DDS files in your folder. Now you need to know where to place your new liveries within DCS. For most of the newer aircraft, the folder is Core Mods, Aircraft, the specific aircraft folder and the liveries folder within that. For older aircraft like the A10C, it's within Bazaar and Liveries. The next thing we'll need is a new folder for our livery. Right-click and create a new folder. Name the folder and drill into it. Select all the newly created DDS files, Ctrl-C to copy them and Ctrl-V to paste them into the new folder. You'll need a description folder to instruct DCS how to render your new files. Simply open a pre-existing folder, copy the description and paste it into your new folder. 
Open up the file and change the names within the inverted commas on the right hand side of each line of the file to match those of the names of each of your DDS files. Rinse and repeat until all of your DDS files have a corresponding line. Leave the number and pilot lines alone. There are two possible states of every line, either true or false. True means it searches outside the folder for the relevant information, false means it searches within the folder. So for those lines we have altered we need to change all of those to false at the end. Change the name at the bottom, enter the countries we wish to use it for, save the file, open DCS and marvel at the abomination. To sum up, on my journey today I noticed people getting ready in the city for the Pride celebration at the weekend. According to estimates, between 3 and 6% of men prefer the sausage platter to the clam platter, and between 1 and 3% of women prefer the clam platter to the sausage platter. As a firm devotee of the clam platter, or a strict vegetarian if you will, I seldom think about these things. With over 2,000 people tuning in to watch me find new ways of embarrassing myself every week, I started to run the numbers. There could well be over 100 of you guys who prefer sausage to clam, and about 30 or 40 of you girls who prefer clam to sausage. So here's my gift to you, the Pride A10C livery. It will be available for download in the link in the description. And the blue one will be available for those gentlemen who prefer the clam and those ladies who prefer the frankfurter. Unfortunately I won't be around for Pride this year because even as a devotee of escargot, I love Pride Weekend. For this simple reason. When all the hot girls see that all the best looking guys around the city prefer bratwurst, their despondency usually causes them to drop their standards. Sometimes so much so that even I can get laid.